<laughs> I'm gonna get bagged out for being Peter McKinnon for doing that. Anyway, that's just the way it is, isn't it? Hey guys, how you going? What's going on? My name's Adam Dyson. Welcome back to another video. And today, this is a video that I've wanted to do for really quite a long time, but I could never figure out how exactly I was going to construct it. So what I'm doing is I'm just diving in head deep um, and I'm going to see how I go. So before I jumped into the video itself, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my podcast. So a couple of weeks ago, I launched the very first episode of What The Focus podcast with my good photography friend, Ben Horton. But it's pretty much a photography podcast based around two guys talking about photos and why we love what we do so much. If you haven't listened already, click the link below and um, have a listen. Let us know, rate it, subscribe do all those kind of things. But we're really blown away for the support of the podcast so far. So for everyone that has watched it, thank you, really appreciate it. In today's video, I wanted to give you two techniques for sharpening your images for social media. So really early on in my photography career, when I first started posting on Instagram, I could get a really sharp image in the computer and obviously taken it sharp in the first place. But the minute that I would export it out of the computer and upload it into Instagram or Facebook, it would end up going soft. And this was something that really bugged me for a really long time. But now I've kind of figured out through watching a handful of videos myself and learning off friends and kind of other photographers that there's a couple of techniques that you can really do. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So I think one thing to remember is the reason why Instagram and Facebook downsize the images in the first place. So if you export out a JPEG or a PNG out of Photoshop Lightroom or whatever photo editing program that you use, it comes out at a set file size. Then when you upload it into Instagram, it obviously has to downsize the file itself. One, so it actually fits onto Instagram into its native format, and also so that they can store it onto their servers themselves. So there's no point uploading massive, massive files into Instagram, because most of the time they're just gonna get downsized anyway. So I've jumped into the computer and I'm just working here in Photoshop, which is my pretty standard editor for most of my photo editing. I also use a little bit of Lightroom for my initial corrections, but as a whole, I use Photoshop. And as you can see already, when you zoom into near on 100% in the photo itself, it's already quite sharp already. It doesn't need to be any sharper than it already is. And all, what it comes down to is a preference. So all I know from my experiences with Instagram is that if we uploaded this now, it would be fine. It wouldn't be too bad, but if we sharpen it off a little bit, it's going to look a little bit better in Instagram itself. So that's kind of the goal here is the two techniques is gonna give you a bit of an overall sharpness around all the edges and just make the image just look a little bit sharper overall. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna do the normal edit that we would do on a particular image. So do your curves and adjustments and your saturation and all that kind of stuff. And when you're completely finished, ready to go, happy with the final image. So we're gonna go into the first sharpening technique that I use. So the first thing I do, and this comes down to print as well as in social media exports, is I always resize the image to the size that I'm going to export it out as. So you can do this a couple of ways. You can come up here to image and you can go to image size, or alternatively, you can hold down on a Mac, option, command, and I, and then it'll just bring up this standard little window here. Then what I normally do on the long edge, so if you've got a portrait image, it's going to be on the height. If you've got a landscape image, it's going to be on the width, is I normally always resize to 2048. And that seems to be a pretty standard size for Facebook. And it's also about 20 or 30% bigger than the Instagram crop itself. And that's kind of what I find is the best results for this sharpening technique. So I go to OK, and it'll just resize it down to the size that I've chosen, the 2048. So then what I do is I come into the layers panel and I wanna make a stamp visible layer. So what I'm doing is I'm making a flattened image of the entire image itself. So the way you do that is I don't actually know how you do it through the menus, but via a shortcut, you go Shift, Option, Command, and you're pressing the E key. And what that normally does is it creates a stamp visible layer above the rest of them, uh, ready for you to edit. I also use this for other techniques as well, so that's a 
Stamp visible layers I think are great just to duplicate everything that you've got and you've kind of got a, a visible layer of everything underneath it. From there, what I do is I come up to the blending options and I'll come down to linear light. Uh, linear light's one I use quite a fair bit. And as you can tell at the moment, it looks really, really good. Um, I really love the way the colors, no, I'm just joking. So it looks pretty rubbish at the moment, which is fine. So with the layer selected, we're gonna come up to filters, we're gonna come down to other, and we're gonna go high pass. And what I find with the high pass filter is, obviously the higher you put it, the more rubbish it looks. Um, but if you come down to somewhere around one to 1.5, it normally adds a really nice sharpening layer throughout the image and also makes waves look really, really good. So this is the main reason why I really like the high pass filter on a linear light. So once again, if we zoom into 100% and you look at the difference now, it looks super, super sharp. Um, but what it's gonna look like on Instagram is probably about that big. Uh, and yeah, that's the goal, is that we want it to look really, really sharp at that smaller size. For a bit of a softer touch to the sharpening, you can always come to soft light, which will just give you a little bit more of a soft look rather than the super sharp look from linear light. So if we compare the three now, I guess you could call it, uh, the first one is the, the linear light option. The second one is the soft light, which looks a little bit softer around the edge. And the third one is the, I guess you could call it raw or unsharpened image. And yeah, so going back through them, soft light, linear light. So it all depends on the level of sharpness that you want to apply to the image um, before you export it out and upload it onto Instagram. So that's technique number one. That's probably more of the complicated technique out of the two techniques that I'm gonna show you today. But yeah, that one's really good for a little bit more adjustability. Is adjustability a word? Yeah, it's a word now. But that one makes it a little bit easier to adjust um, each individual parameters in the sharpening itself. So onto the second technique today, and this one's significantly easier than the one before it. Um, and this is one that I use when I just need a general overall sharpness and I don't want to have to think about it too much. So all we do is we come into the file itself, we're going to downsize it back down into the 2048. And then from there, we're going to make once again a stamp visible layer. So we're going to hold down Shift, Option, Command and E. That's going to drop a layer up over the top here. Then from there, we're going to go straight into our filters. We're going to come down to sharpen and we're going to go sharpen. And once again, if we zoom into 100%, scroll down to one of the areas which we wanted to have sharpened in the first place, and we just toggle that on and off. You can tell that it's just given it a general overall sharpness to the entire image. And I think as a whole, the more basic method is often a better way of sharpening the image. Cool, so that's my general sharpening method and I hope you found that super easy. It's not a very complicated way of sharpening. I think there's a lot of tutorials out there that kind of give you this really complicated way of sharpening through different masks and all that kind of stuff. But if you want a general, flawless, normal sharpening all the way through the image, this is super, super easy. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't watched, listened, I don't know why I keep saying watched. If you haven't listened to my podcast yet, click the link in the description, jump over, give it a rate, a like, a subscribe, whatever you have to do on each of the platforms that you listen to it on. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Now let's juggle first. Juggle. Here we go.